What we are witnessing right now is literally the process necessary in order to set up what we know the final Antichrist is going to be doing. The stage is being set. The theater is all ready to go. What we are watching right now is literally the compiling of events that are necessary to lead us into that time. And folks, I'm telling you this right now, the things that we are watching happening around us is completely spiritual. A movie has just been released. It was released on the 4th of July that may be one of the best and most accurate movies ever to be put in front of American eyes that actually depicts the nature only at a very surfacey level of child exploitation that is taking place in this country. And the reality of it is, this movie is a powerful depiction of the nature of the spiritual battle that exists right now within this world and the very rapid movement that we see going in the general direction of what we know will happen in the final days. Now I bring up the movie because in bringing it up, the one thing that I should point out to you guys is how insane the left has been with respect to this movie. Folks, do you know that the Rolling Stone and every other major publication is openly and aggressively attacking this movie? Did you guys know that? Were you guys aware of the fact that there is a very combined and concerted effort to come against this movie? Folks, the reason why they're coming against this movie is because they are all complicit in the action of exploiting children. CNN is complicit in the action of doing so because they continue to promote the correctness, as they would call it, of drag queens inside of libraries and inside of elementary schools. They are uh, full supporters of what I would call grooming in schools through what they say are health programs. It's kind of crazy. Folks, the devil is so good at what he is doing. He's getting better and 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 better at it by the moment he is. I need you guys to understand the brevity of what we're looking at. Now, I've laid a little bit of a foundation. Let me read to you a portion of what Revelation chapter 13 says. We'll start at verse 9 because I think it would be appropriate to start here in Revelation 13. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. That refers to us. That's anybody, including those that are going to be raptured before the tribulation. But he says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he exerciseth all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. We're talking about the false prophet. Regarding this false prophet, he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Could this be some kind of image that's powered by some form of AI? Probably. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand and on their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score six. Now, you think about this and you think, how in the world can that happen? How in the world can it be that people are going to line up to accept the mark of the beast? Like, tell me how that's going to work. How in the world can that even begin to work? 
It, it doesn't even make sense. Then you get into Revelation chapter 14, and it talks about 144,000 that had a mark on their head. These are the righteous people. They don't have the mark of the beast. But look at what Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 says. By the way, these people are going to be so convinced that they want to take the mark, that this angel has to appear. Look what it says. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, notice this, fear God, number one, give glory to him, number two, for the hour of his judgment is come, number three, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. God made it all, worship him. Then another angel comes, listen to this one. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Third angel comes. Listen to this one. This is interesting. The third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Guys, there's an angel that appears in Revelation 14 telling people don't take the mark of the beast or you're going to be judged yet people still do it and not only do they do it they wave their fist at god my question to you is why does that happen why is it that they can be warned and still harden their heart why is it that they actually don't care when they're given a warning like this get ready for the answer created out of bogus statistics they're created out of fear and with something like sound of freedom it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high level elites and only people like tim ballard and only people like jim caviezel and by extension only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down so there's a very participatory element you're not just going to see a movie you're just killing two hours on a hot day you are helping bring down these these pedophile rings and save children now it's not true but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have there's your reason that's why people are going to line up to accept the mark of the beast that's why people are going to ignore the voice of an angel that's why people are not going to listen people will be programmed into thinking that no such evil exists and even when they begin to see evidence of spiritual manifestations take place in front of them even when they see a man Literally, the devil himself sitting himself up in the temple where God was intended to be worshipped and demanding that he be worshipped himself. Even though there is a demand for you to put a mark on your forehead or on your, on your hand, even though you won't be able to buy or sell without it, even though they're threatening to kill you if you don't take the mark of the beast, even though there's an angel that appears and says, don't do this or you're going to die and you're going to die eternally. You're going to die forever. Don't do this. Even though all of those things happen, they still line up to take the mark of the beast and they're glad to take the mark of the beast. Why is it that that happens? Tell me, why does that happen? Because the delusion, because the enemy is good at what he does, folks. And the enemy is continuing to condition the hearts of man in order to accept such evil intent. Do you recognize how well the enemy works in trying to get people to not see the truth? He's doing a very good job at rewriting history. He's doing a very good job at causing people to deny the very things that are real. Folks, understand the depth by which this kind of wickedness is going on. You have preachers that continue to lie. You have people that continue to draw pictures of the Bible that are not even real. Things that are being said that are so unbelievably dark. And the darkness keeps growing. Do you understand that the darkness that we are witnessing right now is so blatantly outside of that which is correct and real that you would think people would right away be able to see what's false? You would think right away people would be able to say, oh yeah, that's a huge problem. What? No, that can't be right. I want you to know what contentions are being made. I'll close with this one picture for you and this picture will be ugly. How about we start with this? The audio file that you're about to hear right now is Tim Keller. Now, if you don't know who Tim Keller is, Tim Keller, recently deceased, was a pastor that taught falsely. He was a proud member of the Democratic Party. He stood for things that were unrighteous, even though he did it in the name of things that were righteous. And here's a recording of something that he said 
in an attempt to discredit Christians who were concerned about the exploitation of children. Listen to what he says. This is very important. Let's take a listen to what Tim Keller says. It's critical. I would say for the last 20 years, the Christian right, though I usually would agree with their positions, I'm pro-life. You know, in other words, I, I, you know, that did not, I still don't think that same sex marriage is a good idea for, for the country or people. By the way, he says he's pro life and then he qualifies his position about being pro life. He goes, ah, by the way, by the way, I still don't think that same sex marriage is a good idea. He's not saying, I don't think same sex marriage is right. I don't think sex, I, the Bible says that same sex marriage is wrong. He doesn't say that. He says it's just not a good idea. So you guys understand already the depth of which his deception continues to be communicated? Let me start over again so you can hear the context of what he has to say. I would say for the last 20 years, the Christian right, though I usually would agree with their positions, I'm pro-life. You know, in other words, I, I, you know, that did not, I still don't think that same-sex marriage is a good idea for, for the country or people. Um, so, so I would technically be in, you know, agreeing with them, but you know how they raise their money for, for 20 years, they sent out letters talking about how you've got to send us money because the, 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 the gay people are going to try to come and take your children away and because they're evil and because, uh, and because, uh, you know, the, uh, Democrats and the left are going to destroy your religious liberty. They just, they just said awful things and vilified people. It's one of the reasons why so many gay activists now just don't want to forgive evangelicals. He just made Christians look evil for telling the truth. You guys get that? He just made Christians look evil for telling the truth. Listen to him again. Listen closely. Gay people are going to try to come and take your children away and because they're evil. And because, uh, and because uh, you know, the Democrats and the left are going to destroy your religious liberty. They just, they just said awful things and vilified people. It's one of the reasons why so many gay activists now just don't want to forgive evangelicals. Be I think that the best way for me to be able to communicate that he's wrong is by showing you the obvious. He said that we were wrong for saying that those in the gay movement will have an agenda to go after our children. He says it's absurd. He says it's not real. He says it's not true. He says that no wonder why Christians are so hated because they make these ridiculous assertions about the intent of those who are gay or at least a particular subset of those who are gay concerning our children. I'm not going to make any assertion about them. I'm not going to make any statement. I think I'll actually just show you a video of what they have to say. That might be helpful. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny, just this once, you're correct. We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. You can keep them from disco. Warn about San Francisco. He goes on. For four and a half minutes. Please tell me, does Tim Keller's assertion have any weight to it now? Does he make any sense? You have the evidence right there. Folks, here's a summary of the matter. We are headed towards the world of the final Antichrist. We are getting there. Christians, stop staying quiet. No more. Too many lives are at stake. Pastors, stop being cowards. Children are being exploited. They're being sacrificed to the God of Molech. Evil is happening all around us. Stop allowing it. Stop being Jeroboam's children. Enough is enough. Stand up for righteousness. Time's running out, folks. I'm telling you, time is running out.